methodology basically um, tells you how you did the research. For methodology, the ultimate goal is clarity. Uh, details is key to the methodology part. Okay. Uh, why? Because your readers may include students from everywhere in the world. And um, another reason is it must be very clear so other students may produce, reproduce, this is called reproduce your work if they want. And they may want to validate your results. In order to do that, Safety is a key. If you had some uh, issue there, we don't know, right? For example. Anyway, details is a key. So how to write it so your reader can understand it? The approaches to engineering may depend on what kind of work you are working on. Analytical, numerical, experimental, or combination. So that's pretty much four approaches. If you are working on numerical approach, uh, then computational you have to describe the physical model first and then start with general theories followed by specific simplifications i don't know about your model for example we always start with navi stokes equation okay if you are working on some fluid fluid dynamics if you're working on fluid dynamics almost everybody's begins with general theory, which is Navier-Stokes Navier equation. The point here is you start with the equation which is applicable to almost the whole universe. Everything starts from there. But when you have your own research, you must have simplifications to become specific. Then you clearly start with the simplification and you explain why, how the models were developed. You can justify the selection of parameters. I'm going to show you the examples and the model validation before you use it for further analysis. Error bars and the uncertainty analysis usually are needed just to justify your research conclusion later on. And this is the example. We conducted a numerical study. In this model development, the model was described. Show the schematics of this on battery. Okay, that's the model. Then we started with general equation, and then later on, conservation of mass, conservation of charge, conservation of energy, all introduced. If you pay attention to the third part, there is a model validation before we use it for systematic research. If you are working on experimental projects, the key parts are where. One and how, that's the three W's. The W's must be clearly described. You begin with an overall system or process. With the overall, you begin with the overall. Engineering, we describe the process first. Then you move on to the components and provide even further details on the specifications of the instruments and why you choose these instruments. The resolution, how that would affect your results, accuracy, precision, all those things should be discussed. Before you have data, you need to provide the data analysis and expect it, not the results you expected. How would you analyze this? Based on your description of methodology, you described, right? The other people can do it. And you can explain, if you're the one who did it, you can explain the error, uncertainties you observed and observed. So this is a description. I call, I call it the zoom in approach. I call it the zoom in approach. The reason is you start from far away, then into the components. You start with the overall, then you go to components. For each component, there may be materials, maybe some devices, and then how would you calculate this? It's from system to components. So this example we use, and uh, say experimental approach, you can ignore. When we write the article, we wouldn't have this part, okay? I'm going to block it for the ease of presentation here, okay? So you have five systems, five components in the system. It shows the schematic diagram of the experimental setup, okay? They explain the components that consist of 
one a generator second emission sampling system and three a measurement system which is a characterization system okay uh, to minimize particle loss you see there is an objective so to minimize some errors so we use a possible pipe for connection right so if you go back so you have the whole system you have one generation system that's a particle generation system then the measurement system then there's a calculation system so this part is called a test apparatus then you elaborate on you see the system here the generators right so there are here two types of particles we use so then you focus on this one this model so if you keep reading for the next paragraph, it would be emission sampling system and the measurement system and how they are used. Okay. Repeatability is also important. What is repeatability? Imagine you write up the whole methodology section. Then you pass it down to your classmate. Just he or she should be able to continue from there you can graduate or you find a job or you left but the other member of the group should be able to continue your work without calling you without emailing you if anything like that happens that means you didn't describe it clearly so you need to describe the system and the components with exhaustive details and provide all the supplies and the specifications of the devices. Why you choose like that? These are the preparation parts. So these are more like a setup. Get ready, okay? The experimental setup or the project. So from here, you started running your experiments or data collection. And you have a criteria for condition. When should I stop collecting data? When should I start collecting data? And how many data points should I collect? How many replications should I have? I mean, repeat for three times, five times, in order to calculate standard deviation. And these are for data collection, okay? Step one, if you call this is the preparation, this is the data collection, then later on, you, you need to know what you will analyze, what are you going to do with it? Okay. So then you have data analysis. That's the step three. So you need to describe this in the sequence of time. Okay. Components from large to small, time wise, follow this order. I'll give you an example. This is the first uh, paragraph. Uh, for the sampling site location. Okay, so this is for the sampling site and sample collection. It starts with a location because this research involved off site measurements outside of laboratories. So it gives you the location where the southern border of a dairy farm with about 1,200. 1200 milking cows in California. So it's a very clear why does this 1200 milking cows matter? Keep this number in mind. You will see how it was used. This tells you one exact date and hour, approximately two weeks. Then the rest goes to how more detail is published giving you in the supplemental information and the mention in another article. You can cross-reference there, but supplemental information or supporting information is in the same article. And the device, what kind of device is used, and the details also can be found in this article. And you may say, why does this author always refer to the other article? So this is a very typical practice. If you publish more than one article, one article included the details, you don't want to redo this one more time. The reason is it takes a lot of effort to rewrite. Remember to avoid plagiarism, you need to rewrite your own article. So this way is uh, easier. So you can just uh, 
point your readers to another article you published. However, you need to make your reader more comfortable to continue from here rather than drop off your article, read another one, right? So most of the time you give a short description here. This way your reader can understand briefly how you did it. If they want to learn more, then they go back to your earlier publication. Okay. Continue from here, the first sentence in this slide. Ambient air, it's ambient air, basically outside of the farm. If you look at the attention, pay attention here, they use is. Okay. Although this happened in the past, they use is because it describes how this is. However, if you choose to use the past tense, you can do that, but it must be consistent. Okay. Ambient air is sampled at a flourage. When you mention flourage, you give a number, and aerosol particles are collected via, via means by, you see, when you say greased, you tell what kind of grease is used. Then the miler is greased to increase. You see, to do something. Why? So you explain that. And this is the justification. You do not just say, ah, that's how I did it. You need to give a clear justification why. The reason is there are many other options out there. And your choice may affect the readouts or at least a resolution or accuracy, okay? Again, this shows how detailed it can be. This sample consists of eight stages, and you give these eight stages, clearly tell them the size range for each stage, uh, stage number and the size range. And this paragraph shows how you're going to use the samples collected. Okay. And again, that shows you the justification why eventually you only choose stage three and stage eight. These were chosen as representative of the two deposition types. Okay, so which two you read the context? Okay. Now, why do you do that? Because they correspond to the size ranges of this one, respectively, which is important, maybe. Okay. And further in this study. So that's basically how you describe. That's a lot of detail, the size range. So this way people can understand why you do it this way, how you did it, how you did it. Sample analysis. So this part goes or analyze as how they analyze with something, tells you how they're using something okay then you have uh then if you have this kind of a device mentioned this it tells you where you got the same device it's the experimental equipment the equipment called the esi then the samples how you did it you see they keep using the present tense because it's just be consistent okay is are then dispensed is then Again, there is another method uh, with a great detail on uh, how to analyze the miler. Right? I cut this into 20 times 70 millimeters, and you measure 20 points. Of course, 20 divided by 20 is one millimeter interval, which corresponds to the liquid injection size. Okay. This sentence which corresponds to uh, the showing you somewhere this is a justification tells you why one millimeter why not two millimeters you need to explain to your reader why one millimeter your reader may ask you why not just three millimeters would that be easier you just take one piece rather than rather than chop it off into little one millimeter elements right and also there is a resolution the next one, you can see the details provided to ensure repeatability. Okay, for example, I'll give you a highlight of a few examples. 
it says some some parameter most people would stop here okay that's how i did it i maintained it for 30 seconds that's it but as engineering writing in english you do not stop right there okay you need to explain why this time allowed for liquid present at or close to the surface of the stripe to dissolve. That shows you the justification why 30 seconds rather than uh, how about uh, one hour, how about uh, 10 seconds. Then you can finish experimental data collection much faster. The rest of this paragraph explains many previous studies. You see many previous studies have repeated deposited onto something to add mixing, extract this one. However, this leads to the sample loss through each deposition by whatever reason. It's been. Previous studies have sample loss. However, a single deposition and aspiration reduce sample loss while this one you can do Whatever you do, you can reduce sample loss. Okay. Then you say contact time less than 30 seconds are less effective. Now you're going back 30 seconds. Okay. You further explain why you choose 30 seconds. The time over 30 seconds are less effective. Okay. You see how much detail they provide and rather than wasting their uh, words or the page limits on the other thing they are very cautious about this parameter they choose later on it continues with when you have a device here you see the thermal scientific when you have the same mass spectrometer but it must have different models then you list the exact models you mentioned to you in addition to that you also need to list the specs. Okay. So the resolution of and the accuracy. So you don't have to list other specs, like how heavy it is, the weight, the size, the, the, the height. No, those are irrelevant. That doesn't matter that much. The most important parameter is resolution and accuracy. That's why you need to mention them because they may affect the result. There's also justification here. The resolution and accuracy allowed. That's why you choose this device, but you don't tell the reader, oh, this is why it costs about a half a million dollars. No, those are irrelevant. Here, the details again, even the nitrogen and with the, the detailed kilowatt, it is a very detailed description. With uh, this example, I also found the uh, bones in the egg. In the right hand side, if you look at what they write, unfortunately, you not possible. The word unfortunately, which I don't like. Okay. Typical errors, you know, if you know what is right, then the opposite is wrong. Right? So if you omit anything that does not allow exhaustive detailed description, that is a writing error. I'm not saying you have everything in reality. So in reality, every single piece of article has some errors. Keep the whole experimental setup and its components. The test conditions, the justification of the parameters, I already showed you how they justify their parameters. Model number, supplier spec of all the devices you used, and how many replications and error analysis. That's basically where you can see the readouts is reliable or not. Data analysis method, remember I already showed you that it cut that 20, 70 millimeter square into a, how many? One millimeter each, right? So you can analyze it. Expected readouts, you can already show that I'm expecting the organic compound. 
expected and present the result. Accepting the criteria, acceptance the criteria for something, when do I stop taking sample? I'm, am I going to run experiments nonstop? There's no way you're going to do that. You must stop somewhere. Then you tell your reader when to stop. If it's a modeling work, a typical mistake is a physical model, error analysis, and the validation or something similar. I'm going to use examples to explain, compare this paragraph with the one, the good one that I just presented, you see the difference. You see air? Remember the previous article says ambient air, right? Here it says air. Do I need to tell what exactly the air is? Air is air, right? I'm running experiments in my lab with Right? What kind of air can it be? Where can it come from? It must be the air in the room. Okay. That may be your presumption, but in reality, remember, I don't know how you do the experiments. I use air in the compressed cylinders. It's a pure air. So that air may not be the room air. If it's a room air, remember the title of this work is uh, Adsorption of Benzene on some adsorption desorption process, right? This affects the concentration of adsorbents, whatever it is, depend on the concentration of the nitrogen or oxygen in the air, the results will change, okay? So that's why you do not assume people know it is room air or pure air or whatever air. If it's a pure air, tell people where you ordered or where you purchased the air. If it's ambient air or room air, just point it out. Divide it into two routes. By tubing, the tube may absorb something. How, how big is a tube? How kind of a tube is it? I'm in the aerosol research area. I do research in aerosol. I know you cannot take any tube for sample you must use a conductive tubing because that way you can reduce electrostatic precipitation. You can reduce the loss of samples, right? Similar here, you got to point it out. Okay, here there is another device. Where did you get it? Is it a customized, homemade? You purchased it from uh, some companies. Where is the company? Those model information is missing. Containing benzene solution. What is the concentration? Is it 1%, 5%? You know why? That matters to adsorption and desorption equilibrium because that depends on the concentration, okay? If it's not a fix, you got to give it a range, say from 5% to 99%, something like that, okay? That information is missing. Gas is a benzene into a mixing chamber. Look at here, a mixing chamber. What kind of a mixing chamber is it? Is it a large? Is it a small? Is it a homemade or some commercially available ones? If so, what are the models and the specifications? How do you mix them? Well, those are important because I do research in this area. When I mix air with dust particles, I know how difficult it is depend on the size, the results matters, okay? And the surface also matters. If you use, for example, the wood surface or stainless steel, the material matters. Reaction chamber, again, what kind of reaction chamber? How did you make it? What kind of materials are used? How about the temperature, the pressure control, the monitoring, all the details are missing. The concentration of the benzene could be adjusted. Okay, now I ask the question, you could be adjusted, but there must be a range, right? I already mentioned that, that's okay. But then how, how did you adjust it? Mass flow meter, where are the model information? Where did you get it? The resolution is very important, accuracy, right? How did you measure that? Another route, Again, we have no idea how the other route is made. Carrying water vapor, 
like how common there is water vapor. This is the relative humidity in the reaction chamber could be controlled. Then how? From 20 to 60. Why 20 to 60? Why not 25 to 70? Okay, my point here is you gave a number, you choose this parameter, there must be something going on in your mind. You cannot hide that information. You must tell your readers how you end up with numbers like this. Remember that 30 seconds in the previous example. Facing discharge gap to keep uniform relative humidity. Now, let me ask you one question. When you say uniform relative humidity, when would it be uniform? What is the criteria or the criterions for relative humidity? And you have a stable. The criteria for uniformity and stability are not given. So when you repeat the experiments, you would be able to do so. Oh, now it comes with a better one, even 20 again, 20 Celsius degree. Why 20 degrees Celsius exactly? And how did you end up with plus minus one? If you had some training in writing, definitely you would be able to avoid this kind of problem. Okay. Adsorption, desorption, equilibrium. Okay. Equilibrium. What is the criteria for equilibrium? This is also missing. If you cannot tell, then you will continue running the experiments. Depend on your criterions, the equilibrium may give you different results, right? That criterion matters a lot. Okay. Anyway. That is a, a very poorly written paragraph for methodology. Okay, I want you to read this one more time to see how I highlighted the problems. 2.4, that was a very strange number to me. Why not a 2.5? The next one to follow is results. 